This is AnimeCons TV. On this episode, Patrick, Elizabeth, and Doug visit the King of Prussia and his Zenkai Con. Elizabeth, Shiva, and Gail flip their wigs. We talk about how conventions are responding to the earthquake in Japan. And we finally get some voicemails! Yay. We're very excited. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm Elizabeth. And we're here at ZenkaiCon 2011. In King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. So we're going to go and check out the convention and see what's going on. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Um, I'm Kyra, and I'm from New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. Huh? And I'm Brittany, and I'm from Reading, Pennsylvania. So tell me a little bit about your costumes. Who are you dressed as? Um, you go first. <laughs> I'm from Black Butler. I'm Eloise Trancy. He's a antagonist of the series. He's very hyper and very mean. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you? I'm also from Black Butler and I am CL Phantom Hive. I am the main character. Right. And so you made these costumes yourself? No, th these bot costumes are bot costumes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mine's bot too. All right. Well, they look great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you're the, dressed as the Green Ranger, huh? Yep. So you, you make this costume all yourself? I made the armor myself, helmet, and the suit I just bought. Oh, it's very cool. It, and I got those too. Oh, wow. So you're a big fan of Power Rangers, I take it? Yeah, it was my childhood favorite show. <laughs> so you guys are just in this line which just formed here. They're putting the tape on the floor. What is this for? Todd Habercorn. Ah, Todd. Yeah. So how long, uh, what time is the signing? Six, I believe. Six? Okay, so it's not that long a wait. So, it, no, they're actually really awesome here. They don't allow people to start lining up until an hour before, which is much better than a lot of other cons do. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so, uh, is he going to be signing in that big door over there? Is that where they keep the Rancor? They are not telling us where we're going to be funneled. Ah. Uh, be here to be funneled. So it's a secret location. I see how it is. All right. Uh, so, uh, what, what are your favorite roles that uh, Todd has done? Oh, Joseph Jobson from Blast Raider. Uh, well, Watsunuki from Holic. Uh, Hiraku Haruki? God, I always get it wrong. <laughs> Hikaru. So I'm here at the Zenkai Khan merchandise booth with, uh, what's your name? Emmy. Emmy. Uh, so tell me about some of this merchandise you've got for sale here at the convention. Um, well, we have mugs and scarves, and we have some shirts that were designed by one of our artists down there um, after Image of the Ghost. So. Uh, all that was designed by her, and then our runners-up for the shirts contest got their designs made into these pins right here. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, yeah, like an oval pin. And then these are little things of sanitizer for all the, the kids, you know, who need a little sanitizing. Ah, so you're very health conscious. You get the hand sanitizer. That's very cool. Um, random chopsticks and it's kind of a really strange mixed bag of things we have. But. Very cool. I see you're also taking donations for Japan earthquake and tsunami relief. We've done amazingly well. People have been so generous so far. Um, yeah, that's. Already, so. Yeah, I mean, it's only Friday and it's already. I mean, I see a 20 in there. Wow, that's pretty good. Times, actually. Oh, you've emptied it multiple times. Wow, that's amazing. And so, yeah. Like response to. Yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad to see people uh, yeah, taking their wallets out and donating. So that's great. Yep. So we just got back from Zenkai Con in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's our first time for all three of us down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, what, guys, what did you think of the convention? It was okay. Yeah. Um, it's a good local con if you live in the area. If, mm -hmm. you know, if it were an hour or two away from me. I'd probably go every year, but it was almost a six hour drive for us and longer when you get stuck in New York traffic going home. So, um, but it, I think it was a good 
convention for its size. Mm. Um, I had problems with the convention center, though. It was old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the convention center, it's the uh, Valley Forge Convention Center, and it's in desperate need of an upgrade mm. and a uh, good coat of paint. Mm -hmm. I think a, a lot of the problems for Zank Icon came from just needing to figure out how to use the space better. And we were in a couple panels that because of the air wall, sound came through a little bit too much. Yeah, I was in the Chibi Project panel and there was karaoke behind me, mm -hmm. which w was not only distracting for the audience, but for me as well. Yeah, and, and so that's going to be in an up upcoming episode of the Chibi Project. And I'm, I haven't checked the footage, but I'm hoping it doesn't. Yeah bleed through and the sound too much. And there's also always some other events going on in the same convention center, which ha hasn't happened to me in a very long time. And I think if they had the entire convention center to themselves, it would be better because mm. one problem was they had stuff on what was like the first floor, I think, and then the floor below that was always for someone else and mm -hmm. you couldn't really hang out there. And then the bottom floor was all for the convention. So you had to go from the third floor to the First floor, the th first floor, the beat. I don't know. It's a Zenkai Con sandwich. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. With something else in the middle each day. Yeah, yeah. and then they they had to put a staffer there, make sure no one was wandering in. You know, yeah, but the programming they had, they had a lot of good programming. Uh, yeah. I think the highlight for all of us was uh, Grego's game shows. Oh, definitely. Oh, he was, yeah, he, I had never actually seen. I've heard good things about his game shows, and it, but I hadn't actually seen one before. Wow. He does an amazing job. Yeah. yeah. I feel inadequate with all my game shows now. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, the effort, you know, he talks about, you know, programming at the last minute, but you'd never believe it. I mean, the uh, yeah. Press Your Luck, he has the, his own custom whammies and stuff. It's that was fantastic. Great. I used yeah. to watch Press Your Luck all the time on TV, and it was just, it was yeah. like right from the TV yeah. show. I got to play um, Stop the Music, which is his, like, name that tune game. Which was a lot of fun, even though I got killed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but and then he, you know, he holds tryouts so yeah. that yeah. he makes sure he has the best yeah. contestants to make it also entertaining for yeah, the guests yeah. and, and the you, audience watch as well. And you guys also got to play Go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, traditional gaming section. We tried Go, uh, Harafuda, and they also had uh, Shogi and uh, Mahjong. And you know, a lot of conventions have game sections, but this is the first time I've seen traditional Japanese gaming. Yeah, yeah, at a con. It was great because they taught you how to play, and we learned how to play Koi Koi, which is in the movie Summer Wars, which if you haven't seen it yet, go watch Summer Wars. Okay. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a point where they're playing Koi Koi a few times in the movie, and you didn't know what was going on. But now that I do know how to play the game, I definitely want to watch it mm -hmm. again to see how it actually influences the story. Now, mm -hmm. also the Masquerade. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we saw that and I was very surprised there were only seven or eight entries. Seven yeah. entries yeah. and a lot of walk-ons. Well, walk -ons. seven skits and then a lot of walk-ons and mm -hmm. so yeah it was, I, I expected mm -hmm. more because the convention's grown a lot. I heard uh, one staffer saying there were a thousand more people yeah. than last year. We don't have the final tally but it's mm -hmm. it from what I had heard it definitely grown a lot. Yeah, yeah. and w what was interesting was the contrast between Friday and Sunday and oh, Saturday. Yeah. Friday we got there and there was barely anybody showing up. Saturday it was packed with packed. people. So I mean if you're if you're only gonna go one day for this event, definitely go on Saturday and see a lot of it. So Yeah, it was definitely like probably about twice as many people on Saturday as opposed oh, to Friday and Sunday. Yeah. Especially so Friday was that. very empty. Yeah. yeah. And which is weird. I'd never really seen anything like that before. Yeah. I, I I think it's a con that I'd like to come back to. I don't know if I'd go every time, but I'd love to see it in a couple years down the road when they've had more time to expand, maybe get more use of the, their facility or switch to a better facility uh, is the way I'd like to see it. Yeah, I like seeing the different programming. Um, I'd really like to see more conventions through the traditional Japanese gaming. Mm -hmm. That was that was fantastic to see. And um, yeah, I mean, if I it happens that I can go, like if I find a cheap flight because I'm not driving there again, mm -hmm. or and you know a cheap thing, I would I would definitely give it another go. But um, I don't know if it can fit my schedule. Yeah, <laughs> and I think any, anybody in the Philadelphia area should definitely check yeah, it out because it's right there and uh, it's pretty convenient. There's food nearby in the mall, mm -hmm. and so it's it's if you're in the Philly area, it's worth the trip. Yeah, definitely. Hi guys, Elizabeth here with Shiva and Gail, and we're going to show you how to put on a wig, which is very important for cosplay because anime characters 
99% of the time don't have normal hair. <laughs> so, we're going to show you how to put on a wig. And to put on a wig, you need a wig cap. You can buy these at like a Sally's or a lot of times you can buy them where you buy your wigs. Sometimes places are nice and give them with to the Give them to you with your wig for free. That's and some awesome. companies also will give you wig caps that match the color of your wig. Yeah, it's not essential, but it is good, especially if you have a really funky colored wig, wig, uh, wig like a pink or Green, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. But um, nude is definitely a good place to start. So I have short hair, and um, my method is I pull my hair back in pigtails way at the bottom of my, of, uh, of my hair. I showed you people. Oh. Yeah. Ow! Turn around. Yeah, they're messy. They know what pigtails look like. And I pin my bangs back with a bobby pin to just keep them out of the way. Take the wig cap. And then you want to just start in the back and pull it up. And since my hair is short, it's all over the place. And just tuck it in until it's all underneath. You should leave like the ears out. Yeah, and then you want, I keep my hair down here. And then make sure this is right on your hairline. Usually I would have a mirror in front of me, but I don't have one <laughs> to make sure I'm doing it right. Then you want to put in hair pins. These are different from bobby pins. See how it's kind of a funky U shape? That's a hairpin. You can get those at CVS or any kind of pharmacy. Here you. So I just put these in place so the wig cap itself doesn't slip back. Because what the wig cap does, in addition to keeping your hair all underneath, it helps keep the wig on. And you can stick the hairpin straight into the wig yeah, cap. Yeah, she's not sticking them on the edge of it, she's actually sticking them inside. Yeah. So to put on the actual wig, this is going to be my Sailor Pluto wig. Start in the front. You can see here, this is the front as a skin top, all the wefts and stuff, and his hair is getting everywhere. Then just pull it back. Mm. <laughs> oh, long wigs. You are so much fun to deal with. It's my first time putting on this wig, so it's kind of a mess. There we go. Now, if you go by your temples, there are two little tabs that stick out. You want to pull those down as much as possible, and they should go right, pretty much right where your temples are. And then just reach in the back, and just make sure that your hair is all underneath. And the wigs are designed to hold your hair back here. So even if you have hair down to your butt, you can have a, be able to put on your wig. And then add any, like, I have this cool little attachment that goes on the back too, eventually. I just clip them. I bet that looks stupid, but whatever. So, but there are there are way. lots of different ways that you can put your hair under a wig. Um, I have a lot longer hair than Elizabeth. I've been through a lot of different types. Um, I used to originally, I would part my hair and braid it and crisscross the braids. Um, I've even gone so far as to pin curl my entire hair, which is when you just you know make a big pin curl and anchor points of the wig there, but I've, I use a much simpler method now. So because I have bangs, I like to use a headband first and get all my hair back. And then it's just a simple low ponytail. And then I flip that over and I pull the wig cap over everything else. And I stuff my hair in there, and it usually sits pretty evenly, so that it all will, you know, disperse. Because when you have long hair, that can be one problem. You'll end up getting a lump somewhere. And then, same as with any other wig, with like Elizabeth's. And see, she can get all her hair under this short hair. The short wig, yep. And even when I had hair down to my waist, I could get it under a wig very easily, and you wouldn't necessarily see. And something else I want to pay attention to on a wig, and you can see it better on hers because it's short, and I didn't know this when I first started, is that you get these adjustment bands in here, 
Now, if you're able to hook these around like you have a smaller head, and you basically take the one on this side, and you try to dig out the one on this side, this one's kind of folded over, and you hook these together, a lot of times for most people, this will is enough to actually maintain the wig on your head without having to use a lot of bobby pins. And when I discovered this, it kind of saved me a lot of trouble putting a lot of pins in my hair. Yeah, you want to use the hair pins. There we go. And um, especially if you're going to be on stage in the masquerade doing anything that moves around. I saw three wigs fall off people's heads at Oticon this past year. So make sure you pin it down. Um, this especially is important if you're wearing a wig that's very heavy because that can slip back. And it just keeps it secure. Just make sure you kind of catch one of the wefts. And with a wig like this, you only need a couple. You can also crisscross the hairpins to one on top of each other to give it a little more stability. So that's a basic idea of how you put on a wig. Um, you want to try a lot of trial and error to see what works best for you, though. The things that I remember are wig caps and hairpins, not poppy pins. Those are probably the most important. So keep that in mind when you're working on your next up. As I'm sure everybody knows, there was a terrible earthquake in Japan which uh, caused a tsunami and a lot of destruction on the coast of Japan. And uh, a lot of conventions are reaching out through disaster relief efforts to help uh, our friends in Japan. Uh, it, without them, there would be no anime conventions. And uh, so I thought I'd cover some of the ways that conventions are uh, reaching out. Um, I've noticed a lot of conventions seem to be adding Red Cross links to their website or uh, donation jars at the convention and uh, even selecting their charity to be the Red Cross and giving proceeds from ticket sales or a charity auction or some other method to donate money to the Red Cross. Uh, other conventions are uh, keeping their existing charities because they don't want to break off relationships with a cancer society or an MS society. Uh, but they'll add additional ways for people to donate, uh, maybe a, a donation jar and, uh, through the link on the website and the other methods I've mentioned. Um, then there's also uh, some conventions are actually offering a portion of the registration to go towards disaster relief. And uh, one thing that I see a lot of conventions doing, and I encourage them to do more of, is to ask people to not wait for the convention and donate now. Uh, if the convention's in one to six months or e even longer, we need the money now to get over there. We don't want to wait and then, well, maybe you'll forget about it by then. Please donate now wh while you can. Uh, and I've seen uh, a lot of people want to show their support with uh, paper cranes or sending cosplay photos. Uh, that's great, but they need your help with money. I mean, they can't really eat your cosplay photos or your paper cranes. I mean, it's good intentioned, but show whatever financial support you can, really. Um, beware of scams. There's a lot of people that whenever one of these tragedies happens, they try to start up some scam to get people donate money, and it actually goes to themselves, or a large portion goes to themselves, and very little, if any, would make it to the people that need it. So make sure you go to uh, recognized organized charity such as the Red Cross which most people are doing. Uh, check out their website at redcross.org they have links to donate there so you can be sure that you donate directly. Uh, they have also set up a special text line where you can donate through a text message on your phone. You can text Red Cross one word to 90999 to give ten dollars to Japan earthquake and Pacific Tsunami Relief. And uh, I've already done this and I encourage other people to do it. Uh, when you text that, it'll ask you if you to reply yes to confirm. Uh, so don't forget to do that. And uh, please uh, help Japan in their time of need.
voicemails! Yes, we finally got some voicemails, and we'd like to share them with you today. Uh, the first voicemail is... Well, apparently the cast of Anime Cons TV is lonely, so I thought I'd leave you this voice message. I'd also like to let you know that I enjoy your show, and I can't wait to see the next episode. Have a fantastic day. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Movie Phone. Yep, that guy sounded like the movie phone. And, uh, yep, we're a little lonely. We want, want more, more voicemails for us. And we always have each other, but, you know, that only can last so long. And thank you very much. And we are having a very fa fantastic snowy day right now. But let's hear some more voicemails. Oh, thank you. I do think I think we are doing a great job here at Amicons TV. So please visit our web zone for links in the forums, Twitter's, Facebook, iTunes subscription feeds, and past episodes. Join the fun and leave us some voicemails at 762 Adequate, also known as 762-233-7828. Next month. We'll be reporting from Anime Boston. Oh my god, we got a voicemail! Ah! Okay. Keep voicemailing us. Keep voicemailing us. Mmm, <laughs> pizza roll. Leave us a voicemail and I'll send you a pizza roll. <laughs> if you leave us a voicemail, we'll send you a pizza roll. So I'm here with Adrian Pastar, who's apparently cosplaying a revolutionary soldier. So, Adrian, how have you enjoyed the convention so far? No comment, huh? Alright. Uh, well, well, we'll try back with you later. Yes! <laughs> Donate! <laughs>